When Pastor and I sat down two months ago and determined what topics we'd be studying for these one another prayer and care groups, I was glad that I got this one. Fellowshipping with fellow believers is a true joy. We share a commonness with each other that we just can't share with the world, and I'll get into why in a few minutes. When you hear the word fellowship, what comes to your mind? What is your definition of fellowship? Uh, what is fellowship? And what is it not? Initial thoughts might be that fellowship is a potluck dinner Sunday after the morning service or a pie and praise social the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We might say that our annual church picnic is a time of fellowship. Perhaps a meal at a fellow believer's home or a good old-fashioned barn raising could be viewed as fellowshipping. Hopefully I don't drop any bombshells here, but none of those things in themselves are what the Bible refers to as fellowship. Now, all these events or venues could facilitate biblical fellowship, but just being around fellow believers does not necessarily equate to fellowship. So let's talk about why I say this. The word for fellowship in the New Testament comes from the Greek word that means sharing in common or sharing things that are common to everybody. Perhaps a more familiar word to use in the 21st century would be the concept of community. That is, doing life together as an interdependent, loving people. And that's why I say fellowshipping is more than just having a meal or a game night together. It's about sharing a common bond in Christ that motivates us to do life together. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul compares the church to the body of Christ. He says, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And then in verse 27, he says, Now you, the church, are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. Different parts, different people, different personalities, different spiritual gifts and abilities, but one unified body doing life together. So we're beginning to see that what unifies us in fellowship are not the commonalities found in each of us, for the eye performs nothing like the ear. The finger functions in ways different than the leg. The lovely head of hair looks nothing like the arm. <clears throat> Hopefully. It is not the commonalities between the parts that make them one. It is their connection to the body that unifies them. In this case, the body of Christ. It is a shared fellowship with Christ that allows us to fellowship with each other. It is the fact that we are all called brothers or sisters of Christ in Hebrews 2 that gives us the ability and desire to fellowship with each other. It is being co-possessors of the righteousness of Christ that facilitates unified fellowship. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. So in addition to our fellowship being rooted in our commonalities in Christ, John clarifies the extent to which we are able to fellowship with each other. And that brings us to our main text of 1 John 1, 1 through 7, which says that, speaking of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest. We have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. 
Fellowship here being rooted in salvation, in eternal life, uh, the life and the works of Christ. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So fellowship is rooted in the person of God and of the Son. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Our joy, the joy of all of us, may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Jesus and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And here is where John gives us the extent to which we can have fellowship. Essentially, he gives us a limitation. If we say that we have fellowship with him, but we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light of the truth of Christ, as God himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This is one of the most important truths of our study this week, so don't miss it. John says that our fellowship with each other is limited to the vibrancy of our fellowship with God. Our level of fellowship with others is limited to our level of fellowship with God. No fellowship with God equals no fellowship with other believers. And that is why I said at the beginning that we just can't equate a church potluck or having Christian friends over for dinner as true fellowship because those things can be done without any party involved exercising true fellowship with God. If we would fellowship with each other, we must be in fellowship with God. Now, let's address some common and recent elephants in the room. All right, Consider the conflict and the strife and disunity that's going on all around us today. All right, we have political lines being drawn, it seems, over the use of face masks in our country, or the lack of the use of face masks. We have rioters who are seeking their conception of justice through rioting. There is no doubt that our country is divided on these and many other issues. There's no doubt that Christians are divided on these and other issues. But can these issues and their respective fallouts be a part of the church or the fellowship of the body of Christ? Is it possible to fellowship with each other despite our differences of race and the differences in our socio-political platforms and differences of our cultures and various political ideologies? Well, if we were to ask the Apostle Paul these same questions, he would look at us uh, with a puzzled and dumbfounded look, and then he would quote from Galatians 3, which says, Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, for in Christ Jesus, the fulfiller, not the eradicator, but the fulfiller of the law, in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. No black and white, no Hispanic and Caucasian, no Republican and Democrat, no rich, no poor, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, in the sense that you are heirs according to promise. How do we live in unity and fellowship with others who may not hold the same sociopolitical values, cultural values, and political ideologies as we do? Well, I'll tell you how. We put those aside and we focus on our unity in Christ. We put them aside and we focus preeminently on our fellowship with God. Purpose in your hearts today and covenant with God and others, perhaps in your small group, that you will be a member of the body of Christ that is unified with the other members because you are unified in Christ. Purpose that you will truly fellowship with others because you are truly fellowshipping with God. And when we are all living in this way, we will be able to experience the joy of fellowshipping with one another.